Good afternoon. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Redune R6TR. This watch is available from Redune Official Store on AliExpress for €121. Euro. So firstly, let's look at the box that the watch comes in, and then I'll talk you through the other items one gets with a piece. So the watch comes in this black plastic Pelican style case. I'll show you the interior. As you can see, both halves of the case are lined with two foam panels, which does a good job of protecting the watch and shipping from any damage. I like these Pelican style cases. They're very durable and also very aesthetically pleasing. And we do need to deserve credit for not taking the default option of using a lower cost cardboard watch box at this price point. With regards to the items, this is the owner's instruction manual, clear concise diagrams, the instructions are in English, and it details the operation of the movement use, which is the Seiko NH35A automatic. This is the warranty card, and I'm pleased that they filled in the date of purchase, the reference number, and stamped it. Now, usually at this price point, €121, Euro, one would expect a 12-month international warranty, so to get a two-year warranty is very good, and Redune deserve full credit for this. This is the tag that comes to the watch. And lastly, one also gets this spring bar tool, and they've also included two spare stainless steel spring bars, which is very good. So, with regards to the specifications of the piece, this is the Redune R6TR. The watch is clearly an homage to the Torneck Rayville TR900. We have a 40mm case diameter. We have a lug-to-lug -lug measurement of 50mm, a thickness of 13.8mm, and a lug width of 19mm. The nylon single pass strap is 19mm at the lugs and 19mm at the sterile buckle and tang. It doesn't taper. Now, with regards to this strap, I think it's a cost cutting measure and it's disappointing. The fabric feels rough, it doesn't feel smooth against the wrist. I would prefer to see a seatbelt weave NATO strap, alternatively, a ballistic weave nylon NATO strap and a double pass used rather than this single pass which is a clear cost cutting measure. Also the sterile buckle and tang is a cost cutting measure, it's a very thin gauge of stainless steel and I'd prefer to see a signed clasp with the Redune logo engraved. So it really is a poor quality uh, strap. As you can see one fixed keeper and it's made from fabric rather than using stainless steel hardware. One would expect a NATO style strap with two keepers which are stainless steel. So poor quality strap and I think that they need to improve upon it. With regards to the rest of the specification, we have a double domed crystal and it's made from K9 mineral glass as opposed to using sapphire. So again, this is a cost cutting measure. At €121, Euro, one would expect a double domed sapphire crystal with clear AR coating. The negative of using the K9 mineral glass is that there is no AR coating on the underside. And when I tilt the piece at an oblique angle, you can see it is highly reflective due to the lack of AR coating. So I would like to see this upgraded to double dome sapphire crystal with clear AR coating. It's a boxed top hat style crystal and it does do a good job of being an homage to the Torneck Ravil TR900, which used an acrylic domes crystal. Um, but it doesn't have the distortion of an acrylic dome crystal because it's not single dome, it's double domed. So nice profile to the top hat's boxed crystal, but just a disappointment that it's K9. K9 mineral glass isn't as hard and scratch resistant as sapphire, so this is going to be prone to being scuffed and scratched more easily. With regards to the bezel insert, it's also made from K9 mineral glass and fully loomed with C3 Superluminova, which we'll test in the loom test. The the bezel insert is very well finished, nice glossy finish to it, and they've done a good job of inlaying the triangle and the hour markers as well as the Arabic numerals 15, 13, 45 with C3 Superluminova. With regards to the bezel, it's solid 316L grade stainless steel, matte bead blasted effect to it, which complements the matte bead blasted effect to the head of the piece. Now we've got a very fine uh, coin edge style teeth profile to the top edge. I personally would prefer a full coin edge bezel rather than just using a coin edge finish to the top. It's very sharp. Now there's room for improvement with regards to the quality control and also the finishing. I would like to see a chamfer machined on the top edge of the stainless steel bezel to blunt the sharp teeth because the problem with just having the teeth on the top edge is it is sharp. And with a bare hand, the index finger and thumb, the bezel teeth dig into the skin so it's not pleasant to use although it is very grippy and tactile. So I think they could improve this with a large chamfer machined. With regards to the matte bead blast finished, it is done to a good standard on the flanks of the case, tops of the lugs and also the underside of the head of the piece. I'll show you the case back. Solid 316L grade stainless steel case back. Just bear with me and I'll remove the strap. 
and it does a good job of being in a mask to the Tornet Gravel TR900 because it's engraved with very similar markings and it includes a specification in the reference number of the piece. The screw down uh, stainless steel case back provides an effective hermetic seal to 200 meters, which is strong specification. So engraved to a good standard, the matte bead blasted effect is also good. The milled slots are very well machined, no sharp edges, no burrs. And it is flat and relatively low profile rather than being a bubble back case back, um, which one would expect with an NH35A powered piece. Often 35A powered pieces have bubble back case backs to clear the rotor and the movement is thick but this has a flat case back which is 200 meters is very good right so let's test the crown execution we have a solid stainless steel crown which is 316L grade stainless steel the screw down crown provides an effective hermetic seal to 200 meters now as you can see it's sterile and I'm not going to be critical of this because it has a matte bead blasted domed cap to it rather than being signed because this is an homage to the Tornet Gravel TR900 and they also had a sterile crown like this so it does do a good job. Now in contemporary standards it does look undersized for a 40mm head of the piece. This proportion really would suit a 36mm. I think they should have scaled up the dimensions of this crown because it does look too small. I appreciate it's an homage to the Tornet Gravel TR900 which did have a small crown like this but that was a smaller piece. It was 36mm so Redone really should have scaled up the proportion of the crown to better match the proportion of the 40mm piece. So coin edge finished as you can see and sterile domes cap. Let's test the screw down crown execution. Silky smooth, it does feel very smooth. Unscrewing the crown, there's a good interface between the internal thread of the stainless steel crown and the external thread of the stainless steel crown tube. 200 meters is strong specification. So in the first position, one can manually wind the Seiko NH35A automatic to top it up to its maximum 40 hour power reserve. It does feel smooth. One can feel the tension in the mainspring gradually building up. So it is a pleasure to manually wind the 35A. Now, as it's the 35A versus the 38, it does have a date complication. Pulling it out to the first click position is the quick set complication. And the date wheel is present beneath the dial. So one can feel the day clicking over with a quick set complication. I think Redune should have used the 38 because that would have deleted the date complication and also there wouldn't be the phantom date setting position on the crown, there would be one click. Putting it out to the second click position hacks the movement. And if you look at the arrowhead second hand, you can see it's now stopped dead. So it's possible to set the time precisely to the second. So we're now in the time setting position. Nice firm resistance to the gearing of the 35A, no back play clockwise and anti-clockwise. There's an immediate response when one rotates the crown. Absolute pleasure to set the time. It feels smooth clockwise and anti-clockwise. Pushing it back in, it's got a nice positive click and that restarts the movement. So absolute pleasure to manually wind and also set the time. Just a shame that it has the phantom date setting position. Let's test screwing it back down. Immediate thread pickup. So this is 10 out of 10 screw down crown execution. There's a perfect interface between the internal thread of the crown and the external thread of the crown tube. It's just a shame that the crown is undersized for a 40 millimeter piece. I think that they should have scaled up the proportion because it is difficult to get a grip of it because it's quite small and low profile with a large domed cap to it. But having said that, 200 meters is strong specification and it does screw down very well. Right, so I'll give you a wrist shot and you can see how it fits on my 8 inch wrist. Now, pleasant surprise is this single pass nylon strap does actually fit my 8 inch wrist, which I'll show you. As you can see, plenty of length to engage in the keeper. And it's often the case that straps that come on watches are a fraction too short, but this one is actually long enough I can engage it fully in the first in the fabric keeper. One would usually expect to see two stainless steel keepers as per a nylon NATO or alternatively Zulu strap. I think this needs to be upgraded. It's not very comfortable. It does feel very stiff because the fabric isn't a very good quality weave and it feels rough against the wrist rather than being smooth. The other negative is it's 19 millimeters. Now I appreciate in the 1960s when the Tornet Gravel TR900 was made, 19 millimeters was a popular size in the 1960s and 1970s, but by contemporary standards, 20 and 22 are now the industry standards. And for a 40 millimeter head of the piece, one would expect a 20 millimeter lug width. The problem with 19 is it's an odd size, so one isn't going to easily be able to find 19 millimeter straps in order to upgrade this. One could squeeze a 20mm on, but of course it's not going to fit very nicely. 
So 19 is a negative. They really should have used 20 to bring this up to modern day specification. Now, with regards to the strap, although it's not comfortable, the proportion does look OK. 19 parallel rather than tapering. Nice wrist presence, 40 millimetre head of the piece. The thing to note is it has a long lug to lug measurement of 50 millimetres. Now, as you'll know from my previous reviews, 48 millimetres is the sweet spot, regardless of whether you have a 6 to 7 inch wrist or a 7 to 8 inch wrist, respectively. At 50, it's 2 millimetres too long. And the lugs do look visually too long for the 40 millimetre head of the piece. I think they've made a mistake by making the angular lugs too long. If this were 48, it would give a much better fit because the problem with the long lugs is there is an abhorrent gap underneath the angular lugs, as you can see. And that's even with a single pass nylon strap. If this had a double pass NATO or Zulu strap, that would raise up the head of the piece even further off the wrist and there would be a larger gap. But as you can see, even with a single pass strap, there is a large gap. And bear in mind, I've got a large eight inch wrist. So I would say to you, if you have a smaller wrist of six to seven inches, you're going to find the 40 millimeters to wear too much wrist presence and also the 50 millimeter lug to lug to be far too long and it has that large gap. So it's a poor fit. The proportions of the case are off. 19 millimeters is an odd size and then we've got that long 50 millimeter lug to lug with a gap. Now the other thing to note is it's too tall. It's 13.8 millimeters and this is due to the box top pack crystal. Now I appreciate the original Tornet Gravel TR900 from the 1960s did have a boxed top hat acrylic crystal which did look visually like this. But even with a single pass uh, nylon strap, 13.8 for the head of the piece is too tall. And needless to say, this isn't going to easily slip underneath the shirt cuff if you wear business shirts. So it's a top heavy piece, doesn't feel very well balanced on this 19mm strap due to the 40mm head of the piece. Had they used a 20, it would have been far more balanced. So top heavy piece, very long. The proportions really do feel out of proportion. On a positive note, it's only 77 grams on this nylon strap. So it is a very lightweight piece and it does feel almost invisible on wrist. But of course, it just feels top heavy once conscious of the long lug to lug measurement. So it doesn't sit very nicely on the wrist. And I really dislike the large gap underneath the angular lugs. They could have made the case back lower profile and curved the lugs rather than having these straight angular long lugs. So disappointing case shape. Right, so let's do a loom test and we'll see how the loom performs when it's charged up to the absolute, absolute maximum. So as always, I'm going to use my 100 UV LED torch to charge it up to the absolute peak. Right, so that's now fully charged and as you can see, it has not disappointed. So this clearly uses C3 Super Loom Nova. We've got a fully loomed K9 mineral glass bezel and also five to six layers of C3 Super Loom Nova on the printed indices on the dial and also the pencil hands, including the arrowhead tip to the second hand. Good color tone match to the bezel the hands and also the dial, although it does appear to be brighter on the dial and the hands, which indicates five to six layers of application. So I like the green tone of C3. It's glowing brightly and it will continue to glow for a good length of time. So credit where credit's due. We do need to deserve credit because they haven't used any cross cutting measure with regards to the C3 Superloom Nova. They could have used two to three layers, but this is clearly five to six layers of performance. And I really like the green tone of it. I think they've made the correct choice. Although I would have preferred if they'd used white loom rather than patina because I appreciate they're trying to make it look like uh, tritium which has developed a patina from the 1960s but had they used white loom rather than patina C3 it would have glowed brighter particularly on the um, K9 mineral glass insert. So good colour tone match, the green is matched very well and also it's glowing very brightly. I really like the performance of it and the legibility is good, the symmetry of the dial is good, the proportions of the printed indices are correct and also the length of the minute hand is good it's long enough to extend to the minute ticks on the chapter ring the second hand is well proportioned the loomed arrowhead extends all the way to the minute ticks on the chapter ring so easy to differentiate between the pencil hour hand and the pencil minute hand and I think they deserve credit for a well executed C3 Superluminova application. Right, so let's discuss the movement used. You'll all be familiar with the Seiko NH35A automatic. It has 24 joules. It runs at 21,600 vibrations per hour and a frequency of 3 hertz. It has hand winding and hacking, which use for complications. 
and a 40-hour power reserve, which is perfectly acceptable. The stated accuracy of the NH35A is minus 20 to plus 40 seconds per day, so a rather wide accuracy range. However, I'm pleased to report Redune are well regulating the 35As they're using. This one is running consistently at plus 7 seconds per day, which is perfectly acceptable for 35A. Plus 7 is well within the minus 20 to plus 40 stated accuracy. I think they've made the correct choice by using a Seiko NH35A, although they could have improved it by using the 38 and that would delete the phantom date setting position and the date complication. But the 35A is a reliable, well-proven workhorse movement and I like that it's got hand binding and hacking and also uh, the reliability is the main positive of the movement. They could have used a lower grade of movement such as the Miota, 90, uh, Miota 8215 for example and that would have had a noisy rotor but the NH35A is a good choice. The 38 would have been better. So lastly, I'll summarise the piece. What do I think of it overall? Well, when I'm considering reviewing a watch on my channel, the watch meet two criteria. It should be both excellent quality and excellent value at the respective price point. So really to evaluate this piece, one needs to test the bezel execution. 120 click unidirectional bezel, as one would expect. Nice, loud, audible clicks. Feels even all the way through the 360 degrees, which is very good. No lateral side side play. No back play. Nice tight execution. It feels very similar in resistance to a Seiko 5KX. And I like that. It's not too heavy and it's not too light. Feels lighter than a Steinhardt Ocean 139. Very similar in resistance to a Seiko bezel action. And I like the loud audible clicks. They've made the correct decision by using 120 clicks versus 60. Let's just check the alignment. Perfect. The loomed triangle on the K9 mineral glass inset perfectly aligns with the 12 o'clock minute tick and also the printed triangle index on the dial. So no lateral side side play, no back play, perfect alignment, 10 out of 10 bezel execution and just the right amount of resistance. It's a nice medium resistance to it. So I consider it to be good quality and I consider it to be good value at 121 euro. However, I'm not going to say it's excellent quality and excellent value because we do have some clear cost cutting measures. This poor quality nylon strap and of course the sterile buckle is a cost cutting measure. And the most notable cost cutting measure is the use of the K9 mineral glass uh, double domes crystal and also the K9 mineral glass bezel insert, I prefer to see a double dome sapphire crystal with AR coating and also a sapphire bezel insert and at €121 Euro, if it had those two features, a sapphire double dome crystal and sapphire bezel insert then yes it would be excellent quality and excellent value. 200 meters is strong specification, C3 Superluminova is excellent and then H35A is the correct choice but really it's unacceptable at €121 Euro to have a K9 mineral glass crystal and also K9 glass bezel insert. Also there's room for improvement with regards to the finishing and the QC of the teeth. On the bezel they do feel sharp and they need to be better machined. So bear the shortcomings in mind and I hope you've enjoyed my review of the Redune R6TR. Please feel free to post your own comments below the video. Thank you very much.